Uh, greetings, everyone. So what I'm going to uh, record for today and what we're going to learn today is the use of the substitution method in uh, processing or determining the solution of first order differential equations. So allow me to share my slide. So this will be our last topic for uh, first order differential equations. And like the six topics that we discussed before this, uh, uh, in those six topics, our first order differential equation has to first uh, conform to a particular form. That way we can categorize it as in the case of separable, in the case of linear and Bernoulli's equation. And for others, there has to be a test to be done. So that's in the case of the homogeneous BE and the exact differential equation. So that's where you're going to uh, use the technique uh, turning your uh, inexact DE exact. If that is after the testing, you have found that your differential equation is not exact. Now you can use under the inexact method that was the second to the last discussed topic the options were in you can use the integrating factor or you use what we call as the definite differentials or the exact differentials okay so those just just but a review now the reason why i was mentioning those it's because for this last topic of ours and first order differential equations using the substitution method there's no need for us to conform to a particular form that way we can classify our first order DE as such, and there's no need to do any test. So what you're going to do is inspect the, the terms, uh, the functions that appear in your differential equations, if they are somehow related, or if one is the derivative of, of another. So you are to look for, if I may say, relationships between terms and functions that you can find in your differential equation. Now, to illustrate the use of the substitution method, we have these two uh, differential equations here. So in here, in the first one, you have x plus 2y minus 1, dx plus 3 times the quantity x plus 2y dy equal to 0. If you, stop, uh, if you start uh, checking from the top down, so you say you ask if this is separable, <clears throat> this is not separable, if you check this is homogeneous, this is not homogeneous because of this one. If you check this is exact, this is never exact. Now, if you try to convert this to a linear differential equation or to a Bernoulli equation, it can never be in this case for this particular D. So since this is inexact, you can try to make it exact. But as I have discussed to you in a second to the last discussion, topic the process is quite long because you have actually three possible options you have two options for use of the integrating factor and one option for the use of the exact differential so for now let's say i won't uh, i won't use that particular uh technique of turning my inexact DE exact i'll try to check whether substitution will work for this particular DE the same thing with the second one which Again, just like the first here, we're going to start on top, starting with separable, homogeneous, exact, linear, Bernoulli. This one will never fall in any of those categories. So then you may try to make this exact if you want to, or you can try the use of the substitution method. So I'd like to start with the first one in here, and let's start with the clean slate here for our solution. Okay, so the first one that was given to you in that uh, set of slides. Ah, excuse me, class. So let me try to write the first one that was given uh, in that particular uh, slide in our uh, presentation. So we started with this DE. Okay. 
So I have started asking myself whether this is a parable, homogenous, exact, linear, or Renoli. And on the answer to all those questions would be say no. So then I will try to check whether there are relationships in my terms here, if there are similar group of terms or if there are similar terms and probably I can use the method of substitution. In this case class, if you look very closely, you see this x plus 2y here on the coefficient of the differential of x. And you also see an x plus 2y here on the differential of y. Since you can see both of these expressions in the coefficients of our differentials, we can assign, we can assign a new variable for these two a terms x plus 2y. So let's say we let x plus 2y equal to z. So the next thing that we're going to do is we differentiate this particular equation. So differentiate all the terms here based on the variables that you see. So you have dx plus 2dy equal to dz. Then from in here, I can decide which of my differentials I keep and which one I change into something, okay? So it would be easier to keep the differential of x and I'll change uh, the, or shall I say, I can change the differential of x into a representation in terms of dz and dy because in my equation, I could see that dx is equal to dz minus 2dy. What I'm doing here is that I'm going to replace the differential of x here by this set of expression. And I'm also going to change the x plus 2y by z. Okay, so I will do that. So for the first coefficient here, I can have uh, z, x plus 2y being z minus 1. Then I'll change the dx here to this one. And for the second term, I will have 3, and then I have x plus 2y, which is z, then I have dy. So the purpose of representing the two terms in here in the original DE by one variable is for me to simplify the original DE by simply representing these two groups of terms by one variable. Now, if we do that, however, we uh, added a new variable in our differential equation. And it's not possible that in your differential equation, you should have three variables. You should only have two. One is the unknown function or your dependent variable, and one is the independent variable. So as I have mentioned a while ago, I will decide, or I have decided that I keep the dy and the dz, and I'll change the dx into an expression of dz minus dy. Now, giving me a differential equation now that does not contain any x, but rather has the variable z and the variable y. Now, I will uh, expand this, or I was, uh, shall I say, group the terms that have the same differential. So I will uh, distribute this quantity x minus 1 in here. And of course, there's nothing to distribute there because there's only a single term. Then I will group the terms that have the same differential. So if I do that, I will have z minus 1 dz in the case of this one multiplied to this. And then I have here minus 2 z minus 1 dy plus 3z dy equal to 0. Now, in my expansion, I am seeing two terms that have the same differentials dy. So what I'll do, I'll group the terms, uh, these two terms into one. I need to combine the negative 2z plus 2 to 3z. Okay, so I'll do that. So I have a z minus 1 dz. And if this is a minus 2z plus z, so that would be a z. And this is minus 2 times negative 1, that would be plus 2 then it's multiplied to dy. So you can see that my original differential equation, which doesn't fall on any classification, but is not proved to be homogeneous or exact after testing, is converted into this form. So I have a z minus 1 dz, in this case of this one, 
And I have here Z plus two, quantity Z plus two plus dy in case of this one. Now you can see that this is right away. So right away, this is separable. So let's go to the next page and process our separable DE. Now, all I need to do is transfer the quantity Z plus two in here on this term. That way I can integrate this one. Also the same thing with this. So I will just do that by, before we go to the next page, by dividing my new differential equation by z plus two because I want to eliminate quantity z plus two on the second term. So now for your first term, you will have a z minus one over a z, um, I forgot what's there, over a z plus two. Uh, dz and on the second term you have dy left because this will these two will just cancel each other so you have dy equal to zero so being separable now you can perform integration separately for your two terms now this one the rest of the process here is your integral calculus so your z minus one over z plus two actually based on the rules of integration have the same degree in Z. So what you do, you divide the numerator by the denominator. So you'll have one and you'll have a Z plus two. And when you subtract, you will have here a minus three. So your first term here actually is the integral of, for the one you have the DZ. And for this remainder, you have minus three integral of uh, dz over z plus 2. This is your negative 3 rem remainder, so it would be negative 3 over z plus 2. And that's your second term. For this uh, first term here that you need to integrate, then you have the integral of dy equal to 0. So if you will further integrate, you have a z, and this one is an ln, an ln of z plus 2, and you have here a y. And if you recall our discussion regarding the uh, presentation of the arbitrary constant when one of the terms in your answer of the integral is an ln. So since I have an ln here, I will write my arbitrary constant as an ln of z. And then I will transfer this ln here that I have on the left side, on the right side, because I have another ln here. So I will have z plus y being equal to ln c plus, so this becomes plus already, 3 the ln of z plus 2. Then I'll simplify this one. Sorry about that. Okay, and I will simplify this one by making the coefficient 3 here as the exponent of the z plus 2. So on the next page, we will have now something like this. We have a z plus y equal to, so you have here ln of c. It's being added, so it's being added to this one. So what, uh, what is this particular property of the ln if we have addition? That's equivalent to multiplying the arguments of this ln. So I will now combine the two lns into one ln expression. So I will have the ln of c. We have times because I have here addition. So meaning these two arguments will be multiplied. So the three becomes the exponent of this expression. So that would be z plus two raised to three. So I'll have here c plus two raised to three, okay? Now, I will um, write this particular solution explicitly in terms of y. So I will write here y is equal to ln or rather, um, again, we will have c times z plus two raised to three minus z. So I have written it explicitly in terms of y. The thing is, we don't have the z variable in our original DE. So we need to go back to the original 
and check what the z represents. So z is x plus 2y. So you're going to change all the z here in your answer to x plus 2y. So y is equal to ln of, so you have c times x plus 2y plus 2 cubed. The z was replaced by x plus 2y minus the quantity x plus 2y. Okay. In here, you could see, class, that it's impossible or it's difficult to write your solution explicitly in terms of y because the argument of your ln here has also a y variable. So we, the best that we could do is simplify only. So this is negative x minus 2y. So I'd rather place the minus 2y in here, in here. So this becomes 3y positive because this makes it positive. Equal to the ln of c times x plus 2y plus 2 raised to 3. Okay, you have that. And of course, the x. So minus x. Now, if you want to transfer the three in here, that could be done. So you have y is equal to one third times the ln of c times x plus two y plus two cube. And then you have minus x. Now, this is the solution of our given differential equation which we solve, sorry, the process of substitution, okay? Now, this one does not contain any transcendental function. It's only the x and y variable. What about if we work out the second example wherein you already have the presence of a trigonometric expression? So what is this particular uh, differential equation that was shown to you a while ago at the start of the discussion in the in the form of a PowerPoint presentation. So this particular DE is actually one plus three X sine of Y, TX minus X squared cosine of Y, DY equal to zero. Now, again, you have to ask, this is a parable? Is this homogeneous? Is this exact? Is this linear? Is this Bernoulli? The answer, again, is a no to all of those. So it doesn't fall on any of those. So now you try to check if it's possible to use substitution. Now, this time, if you look for similarities, you don't find any. So there's no similarity in here. There are no group of terms that are similar. But if you look very closely, you could see relationships. Now, this sine y function, if you differentiate it, it's actually cosine y dy. So now we will use this particular uh, re uh, relationship between sine and cosine function. That way we can use the substitution method for our second DE. So we will do that. I will assign again, just like in the first example, I will assign a new variable to the sign of y. Uh, if I will differentiate this again, so every time you assign a new variable to represent a group of terms or a function, the next thing that you do is you differentiate. So dz, and this one becomes cosine of y dy. So I'll go back to my DE and substitute this Z and this DZ to this expression. So I will have one plus three X Z. And you have the DX. And in here you have minus X squared DZ. Okay, equal to zero. Okay, your X squared and you change the cosine of Y DY to um, dz. Now, if you look closely at this new differential equation, this is not homogeneous. This is not separable. Let me check. This is not exact, I'm sure, but we can check whether this will fall on the linear or Bernoulli equation, knowing that it's so easy to transform this DE into one that has the derivative the unknown function and another set of terms. Okay, so we will do that class. Um,
Okay, so that's it. I need to stop because uh, my laptop ran out of power. So you have this now. So we're going to check whether this is uh, linear or Bernoulli equation. So we will uh, try to represent our derivative. So our rule in representing or specifying our derivative is that the differential that has the, least, the simplest coefficient should be on top of that derivative. So in this case, our derivative should be a dz dx. So I will divide by dx. So what remains after division would be 1 plus 3xz minus x squared dz dx equal to 0. This is far from being linear or Bernoulli in terms of form. So I'd like to transfer this one in here. That way it becomes positive. And I will transfer as well by division the presence of the x squared as a denominator of this one. That way my derivative will have a coefficient of 1. So I will divide by, uh, I can do also division by negative x squared. That way my derivative becomes positive already. Okay. So in our next slide, we will have now a dz dx. So it becomes now minus, minus in the sense that my division is negative. So this one makes it positive for this. And I have x squared here as the divisor of 1 plus 3xz. So I will have here 1 plus 3xz over x squared equal to zero. So I just rearrange it that way. I can check right away if I have a linear Bernoulli equation. So 1 plus 3xz over x squared and it's negative. Now it's a requirement for linear or Bernoulli that the next term after the derivative should be the product of your unknown function, the unknown function, in this case that would be z, and an expression in terms of the independent variable. So my unknown function is only present here on the second term. So if I will distribute x squared as a divisor for this two, I will have this now. So I will have 3 over x because the x here and 1x here will cancel each other. And it will be multiplied by z. This one will be negative 1 over x squared. And I will transfer it on the right side. Then that makes it positive. Now the way it looks now. It's now linear. So this is your derivative. This is your P of X. This is your Q of X. So it's linear because you don't have the unknown function here raised to an, a, an exponent other than 0 or 1. Okay? So if it's linear, what do we do with if it's linear? We determine the integrating factor. So our integrating factor phi is e raised to the integral of, so this is negative 3. So I'll place it here and I will have a dx over x. This gives us an e raised to negative 3 ln of x. This is e raised to the ln of x raised to negative 3, which is actually 1 over x cubed. With that as our integrating factor, we use the formula for linear DE, which is the unknown function. This time it's not y but z times the integrating factor 1 over x cubed should be multiplied to the integral of the q of x, which is in this case 1 over x squared. So I will have 1 over x squared. You will multiply to this the integrating factor phi and then integrate. Now, in this side, it's a z over x cubed, but this side will require the use of the power rule. So this is x raised to negative 5. So it becomes x raised to negative 4 over negative 4 plus c. Now, what is z in the first place? Because we don't have z in our original d, so it has to be replaced. So it's the sign of y. So we go back here and replace our z by the sign of y. And uh, we multiply our entire equation by x cubed. So I'm merging two procedures here so that we will not have a very lengthy solution. So the z that is remaining here after multiplying the entire equation by x cubed is your sign of y. 
And you have this one now. So if you will multiply by x cubed, this becomes x raised to negative 1 over negative 4 plus c x cubed. Or we say that the sine of y okay, is equal to c x cubed minus 1 over 4 x. So x raised to negative 1 is 1 over x. And this is your 4. The negative sign is it is 1. So this is the solution of our D using the method of substitution. Now, if there's a question that might be uh, crossing your mind as to what is it specifically in your DE that tells you that right away when it's given to you to solve, you will know that this is uh, to be uh, processed using the method of substitution. There's no clear cut rule class. There's no test. There's no form. So just like an integral calculus, it takes a lot of practice. That way you will know that your particular given integral, or in this case, your particular differential equation will fall on any of the category or can be solved using the other te the techniques that were taught in the subject. So you have to do a lot of practice. But my suggestion is after now knowing eight possible ways of finding the solution of your first order differential equation you start from the simplest so whenever you're given a de you ask first is it a parable next question is it homogeneous if the answer is no is it exact if the answer is no you go to linear and then bernoulli actually when you test in terms of the form whether your de could be linear or bernoulli uh, it's just one test that you do then you can right away say whether it's linear or bernoulli now, if your DE tested in exact, meaning it's not exact, and you want to make it exact, then you have to use the two possible options. The use of the integrating factor or the use of the exact differential method. Okay, But that one is not suggested because, again, it entails a lot of practice in terms of manipulating your equation. That way, you will have a resulting exact differential in your groupings. At the same time, the other terms are rendered integrable. Now, if all else fails, meaning after you have asked yourself question whether those are applicable for a given DE, and your answer is still a no, then that's the time that you're going to use the method of substitution. Okay, so this ends the techniques and the classification of first order differential equations.